Hey everyone, it's your career coach, kick-ass coach, bring your soul to work, land your dream job coach. I'm here to talk about the biggest problem vexing us in the workplace. Ah, millennials, what? <laughs> oh my goodness, I have so much to talk about and share and advise on for this topic. And uh, before we get rolling, those of you who are watching me live, welcome live to this Facebook Live. Um, my format's a little bit different um, the way I'm looking at this today, so I'm a little bit like thrown off a touch. Um, looks like I have some more tools. Once I learn how to use those, maybe I can add some, some graphics and some fun to these Facebook Lives for you. Uh, those of you who are listening on the podcast to be broadcast later, um, let's rock and roll because we have so much to cover. I have so much to share with you. And I brought some handy dandy, uh, things to, to share with you, um, about this wonderful topic. So I'm going to read something and I want you to guess. I want you to guess where this is from. They think they know everything and are always quite sure about it. Hmm. They are high-minded because they have not yet been humbled by life, nor have they experienced the force of circumstances. Wow. Unbelievable. Oh, you cannot hear me. Let's see. I don't know if that's on my end. Uh, let's see if there's a setting here. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, 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 as I mentioned, it's a little bit different. There's other, let's see, settings. Uh, gosh, it looks like it is, let's see, video settings. We're rocking and rolling there. And uh, let's see. Okay. Everyone, can everyone hear me now? Because I just checked my audio settings and it looks like we're rocking and rolling. All right, Jean hears me. I can hear you fine, Sherry. Thanks a lot. Sorry about that. Let me just get the microphone really, really close. I usually try to try to keep it off screen just so it's not too distracting. But anyway, what is a millennial anyway? What what is this crazy group of people? Well, according to the Pew Research, which I would say Pew Research is pretty much like the bomb diggity when it comes to um, information. And I know I saved this, so let me uh, pop over to it. So the millennials are those folks, and this is according to the Pew Research uh, Center, Social and Democratic, Demographic Trends. They study all this kind of stuff. A millennial is someone born from 81, 1981 to 1996 and they would be 23 to 38 years old. Them there is the millennials. 23 to 38 year olds currently. This is this is the year 2019. So what are the other generations that we're talking about? Well, Generation Z, which is uh, folks who technically would not necessarily be in the workforce yet, but they were born between 97, 1997 and 2012. I guess there's a generation after that, uh, kids born after 2013. But we're really concerned mostly about this millennial group born from 1981 to 1996, and they are currently 23 to 38 years old. Generation X, the generation right before, was born from 1965 to 1980, and they would be 39 to 54 years old. The baby boomers which I think have been made famous by so many trends in the past, born from 46 to 1964. If those of you who are listening on want to know, I'm technically a baby boomer, but I always considered myself a late boomer. And that's what they call uh, folks who were really born in the 1960s. Uh, just knowing folks who are in that baby boomer generation, uh, as with all of these earmarked generations, they're not precise, black and white, you know, because of this birth band that you are always this. But it's something to be talked about. 
Who were before the baby boomers? The silent generation. They were born from 1928 to 1945. So they are 74 to 91. My mom's in the silent generation. It's interesting that they're called that. This was also called the greatest generation that ever lived because uh, some of these folks marshaled through uh, World War II. Although if you were born in 1928, you were not in World War II. Um, so the silent generation, or my parents were the silent generation obligation. They didn't really speak up much. They just got stuff done. They just went to work and did work. The baby boomers began being boisterous and loud and talking about things and having rights and freedoms and things like that. Generation X kind of gets lost now between the baby boomers and the millennials. The millennials are the largest working population band currently. They are the second largest generation ever born. And since baby boomers are dying off and millennials are being added to by immigration, the millennial band is the largest one in the workforce. Here's the thing, boomers and generation X, the millennials are here to stay. Listen, you might think, and I got to keep going back and forth between my notes here. So again, a quote, they think they know everything and always quite sure about it. How about this one? Um, I mean, the free access with which many young people have to romances, novels, and plays has poisoned the mind and corrupted the morals of many a promising youth. That was a quote in 1771 in Town and Country Magazine. The quotes above about youth were, uh, they think they know everything and are always quite sure about it. That's from Aristotle. And how about, um, they think, they th okay, I was read, read that. They are high-minded high because they have not yet been humbled by life, nor have they experienced the force of circumstances. Fourth century BC, talking about the generation coming up. You know, history shows us through um, documentation that every generation that's been coming up from the rear has more or less upset the generation that preceded them. You know, I, I tried to convince my mom of this a couple of weeks ago. She didn't quite get it. How about this for a quote? If you want to guess what year this was from, go ahead and put it in the chat. Let me know that you're here and that you can hear me fine and uh, see if you can guess what year this quote's from. A pernicious excitement to learn and play chess has spread all over the country and numerous clubs for practicing this game have been formed in cities and villages. Chess is a mere amusement of an inferior character, which robs the mind of valuable time that might be devoted to more noble or uh, acquirements. They require outdoor exercises, not this sort of mental gladiator gladiorship. Does it sound like the internet to you? Does it sound like the smartphone phone? Replace the word chess with smartphone and you have a comment that would be just as likely said today. This is from Scientific American, 1858. So in 1858, the bane of existence was the youth learning chess. Come on, as they say in ESPN, come on, man. Youth has never been exposed to such dangers of both perversion and arrest as in our own land and day. Increasing urban life with its temptations, prematurities, sedentary occupations, and passive stimuli just when an active life is most needed. Early emancipation and a lessening sense for both duty and discipline. 1904. Ah, how about the final one? Just in case you're wondering, we defy anyone who goes about with his eyes open to deny that there is, as ever before, an attitude on the part of young folk, which is best described as grossly thoughtless, rude, and utterly selfish. <laughs> 1925, over a hundred years ago, over a thousand years ago, 
and BC. The terrible youth that's growing up, they're ruining everything for us. This is not a new conversation at all. It's not new at all. Okay. So here's the real news. Here's the data, not the drama. Millennials are more educated than any other band of generation ever. As a matter of fact, <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> right. As a matter of fact, millennials are more educated and making more the more educated they, they make, the more education they have. Non-educated millennials are stalled out. Mm. So let me just read a few more pieces from my beautiful Pew research because I took such great uh, pleasure in finding that. So now I got to hang on. Let me just go get that again. Compared with previous generations, millennials are foregoing marriage, living with their parents a little bit longer. We all, we've all heard that one. But they are the second largest voting uh, generation next to the baby boomers. They're the largest in the workforce because baby boomers have retired or have, well, have retired. A lot of them have retired. Um, they're more highly educated. The silent generation, 15% had bachelor's degrees or greater and the millennials, 39%. So almost three times the college education of the silent generation. And the boomers were about 25%. Gen X, 29, and the millennials, 39%. Gains in educational attainment have been especially steep for young women. Millennials have more women educated than ever. Millennial uh, men are opting out of education at a faster rate than women. Um, so we see women staying in college longer and achieving degrees more. Um, what else can I tell you about these horrible millennials? Um, they're having a difficult time actually outpacing the generation X right now. Uh, generation X is the highest earning, uh, college educated band, a bachelor's degree or higher. The generation X, which again, are those folks who are 38 to 55 are the highest earning and educated folks right now. And the late boomers are trailing them again. As we get into the boomer generation, there's more retirees. Um, yes, this all this information is um, U.S.-based information. So um, millennials without a bachelor's degree are more likely to still be living with their parents. Yep, um, that's just part of what it is. Millennials are also moving significantly less than earlier generations of young adults. It's very common in the 20s and early 30s to have to have some mobility around getting a better job, getting that advancement, that promotion. Millennials are doing that less, and they are less likely to be married than previous generations at the same age. The silent generation was married 83% of the time at the ages of 25 to 37, and the millennials less than half are married, 46%, Gen X 57, and the boomers around 65%. So the marriage rate has fallen, um, incomes are up there, education is far outpacing any other generation, and uh, they're, the, they're big voters. The projected population by generation, obviously we know that the silent generation has begun rapidly dying off, the boomers as well. And so Gen X and the millennials are projected to be a strong, strong, big piece of the population going forward. So these millennials are not all that bad and their attitudes or whatever it is that we're talking about with this cross-generational leadership and bringing cross-generational teams together. I'm no, now going to talk to you, Generation X and baby boomers. The millennials are not causing the problem. I know. You thought I was going to stand up for the older generations, didn't ya? One of the things I hear all the time on the career clarity calls that we book, uh, my team and I uh, take stock and share the things that we hear in common and all the time, ageism, ageism, ageism. I'll tell you what ageism is. 
Ageism is closing your mind and closing your heart. That's what ageism looks like. I was coaching one of the women on a clarity call last week who there that that's what I really needed to do because she was in a, in a really bad way. And she thought that she was being locked out of the workforce at the age of 54. And to be honest with you, as I was with her, her attitude was what was aging her. And everything that came out of her mouth was they, 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 they. So here's the thing. Anytime we are theying, we are in victim mode and we are shut down. I have, uh, technically speaking, three, four millennials who work for me and one consultant on the side. Um, I love millennials. Why do I love millennials? Because they tend to be interested, eager, uh, helpful, thinking about things that aren't stuck. And you know what? I don't have to take all of their ideas, but I love them. I love the ideas. I love the can do. And I think of myself in the first 10, 15 years of my career, I was eager. I was can do. I would, I was, we should do this. We could do this. Let's go tackle that hill. Here's the thing. Most folks, by the time they're hitting their mid forties and their fifties, for sure. I said, most folks, not moi. <laughs> I've had my moments, but I'll tell you this. Most folks have been burned by life. And we lose our zest, we lose our zeal, we lose our inner being. That's what ageism is. Ageism is your soul shrinking into a little microscopic version of what you want it to be and what it wants to be. So your soul doesn't know what you love. Everything always goes back to your soul. Your soul shrinking makes you angry, makes you resistant to change. It makes you irritable. It shuts your brain down. It is not fun to lose your soul and to have it shrink so, so far down that you're not even interested in new ideas. As a matter of fact, you need to have articles and guidebooks on how to deal with people who are a different age than you. I mean, come on, people. Really? Can't we all open ourselves up to people who are different? By the way, the millennials are the most diverse band in the, any of the generations by far by far. I love diversity. I love hearing from people with different ideas, different backgrounds. I love it. I love it. Not everyone does because what happens is that you get so comfortable in your zone. You get so comfortable knowing what you know. You know, by the time you're in your forties and fifties, for most of us, a lot of things are so simple, so easy because we've been at it for so long. It's second nature. We just go and do. And here's what happens. Anything that's new, a new skill, a new talent, it hurts. It's painful. Um, RJ, all right, you love millennials. Well, your soul's not shrunken as bad as you might think. Um, any ism does that. Check the they at the bottom door. That's right, Tanya. <laughs> Absolutely. So I want to offer and invite you to explore conversations with people outside your comfort zone, whether they be millennials or people who are even older. Ah, oh, there's people older than me. <laughs> so I want your, your, your heart, your mind, your interest, your desire to be open to all people at work, whether it be those feisty millennials you know, they're moving around the country less than any other generation. Yet if I polled a bunch of people about millennials, they would say that they move a lot, that they don't can't stick with anything. You know what? It is false. As a matter of fact, millennials are staying with jobs as long as other generations. I know. It's just the rowdy few that, that maybe you slash we are paying attention to. Millennials are eager to do something, to make their mark, to change things, to better things. They get technology. It's easier for them to navigate connecting the dots because they've grown up with it. If you have outdated yourself or if you're not as nimble on either problem solving or interest or you feel like been there, done that, yeah, we tried that 10 years ago, 
just get out of your own way. Because if you have become hardened by bad luck, missteps, job trauma, things not working out, you getting yelled at or having toxic bosses, getting bounced out of a job and then not being able to recover from it. So you feel kind of hardened and you feel like you're a little bit washed up. That's on you. That is all on you. Mm -hmm. It is. If your career is not performing for you, it's not because of the millennials. It's because of one thing, one thing only. The woman in the mirror. Yep. The millennials are not the problem. As a matter of fact, they are indeed probably the answer. You know, every generation has kind of screwed up on some things or left behind certain things or not paid attention. We could certainly run the list. So millennials come with fresh faces, new ideas, interest. Embrace it. Embrace it. Because they are younger, because they have not been damaged by the circumstances of life, they're eager, they're happy, they're excited. For thousands of years, we have been criticizing the generation that's coming. Thousands of years, this is nothing new. And indeed, what has happened is that the planet has gotten better. Every generation that has been feared by the generation before them has made things better. We have less poverty on the planet. We have less crime. We have access to water, clean water and plumbing more on this planet than we've ever had. Why? Because generations have continued to focus on making this a better place. Do we continue to have problems on this planet? Of course. But if you look at the real data, not the drama, you'll see that we are advancing in ways that would defy your imagination. Poverty been, has been cut in half on this planet in the past 15 years. Poverty has been reduced over the last 15 years. Did you hear me? Look it up. There are so many wonderful, beautiful signs that humanity is expanding, getting more loving, better, smarter. Look at all the technology around us. I was uh, test driving a friend's car this weekend of a car I'm planning on getting. It was the Tesla Model 3. I'm going to tell you something. There is a world of difference between driving that car and driving a clunky gas guzzling combustion engine. Not even the same experience. I would, um, I would suggest that when you feel critical of something that you don't know or someone you don't know or a topic, don't go by the drama. Go check it out. Go look up millennial. Uh, what's the millennial generation doing? I, I Googled that to get my research for this discussion. Although I had a hunch because I'd look at it before and actually gave some leadership, leadership talks about those feisty millennials when I was actually in corporate America as an executive because we needed to calm down the things that were happening. I was an executive over a lot of healthcare providers around the country. And boy, oh boy, what we would hear from the older physicians, you know, these young doctors, they just don't work as hard. You know, they just don't want to put in the hours. It's really tough to manage them. They have a mind of their own. They don't know how to work hard. On and on. Okay, leader, what are you doing about that? Possibly they're not inspired by you. So all problems, all problems that you pinpoint in someone else, or in something else, or this is wrong with this, or this is not working, or people don't, whatever. Again, anytime you're using the word they in any shape of the word, you got to check yourself out first and then check out the facts and then open your heart and open your mind. 
because it's not quite what the fear brain wants to bring in. The fear brain does not want to bring this reality of the world getting better in because it is built for survivors. The fear brain is our primitive instincts to protect ourselves. Protect. This means this. This means this. This means this. Get out of here, foe. Your primitive nature is not helping you right now in this expansive, beautiful human experience we're having now as humanity has expanded. There's little reason for you to fight your foe. There's little reason for you to freeze. There's little reason for you to contract in the world or to fight against. There's situations that may call for that, but what is really going on is that your primitive brain is causing circuitry to go berserk. I don't know about that, therefore it's dangerous. I don't know that person, therefore they're dangerous. I don't understand that, therefore it's dangerous. Your primitive brain is causing all sorts of problems for you. And what you have to do is transcend your primitive brain become an enlightened observer of the world. And you need to be in your soul's highest level of vibrational inner divine self and navigate the world from that place. And I'm calling you out to do that because the rest of this planet needs more enlightened warriors on this planet and not people in fear, not people drowning in overwhelm because they're listening to all the drama. You know, you can get your nervous system all sorts of out of whack by paying attention to the drama, by reacting to the news, to gossip. And here's the other thing, human beings. Here's the other thing, humans. We love connecting on gossip and what's wrong. It allows us to feel that we have common bonds with people. Did you hear this? Did you hear that? Did you hear this? Did you hear that? Sally's doing this. Did you hear who's, what's happening? Did you hear the company this? Did you hear what's going on there? Did you hear about that? Did you hear about that? Did you see the news? Oh my God. We love connecting with people on what's wrong. It gives us that instant connection. Whereas maybe we might actually be compelled to want to connect actually on a deeper human level and be somewhat vulnerable. But we love connecting on problems and drama and gossip and what's wrong with the world. Just watch. 99% of the news programs are all about the viewers connecting with the drama of the day. Years ago, I stopped watching regular news and I no longer turn on a morning show. I know all the morning shows are going to like be like, what? Um, because I did not want to start my day with the drama of the world. I wasn't running the United Nations, so I figured I didn't need to know all of that. And I figured just being on my phone and kind of doing stuff on the internet, I was going to find out the big news. And I didn't need to hear paragraph after paragraph of the same problem and drill down into it. My brain would get so crazy. And then I would go to work after that. No, thank you. Talk about a nerve wrecking sandwich. Woo, no. So this whole millennial problem is just like any other problem that we want to glom onto because it allows us to take ourselves off the hook. So I'm giving you permission this week to get yourself on the hook. Put yourself in the driver's seat of who you are, what your career and life is all about, and how you conduct yourself, not what they are doing to you. It'll shift everything for you. Now, it might be relatively impossible for you to make that shift. For most people, they just can't make that shift, and it doesn't work for them. Because the conditioning and all of the preventing of our primitive nature is shutting that down. 
well, I can't take responsibility. People won't hire me. If I am responsible, no, I'm applying for jobs. No, you're not being responsible. If you're not getting hired and if you have an education experience and expertise, you should be getting hired. It's a pretty open job market. There's lots of jobs. Unemployment rate is super low. As a matter of fact, it is like 1% for educated people. So if you've got an education and you're having trouble advancing your career, you've got a poverty issue either poverty of the soul, poverty of the mind, poverty of conditioning. It's a serious problem because it can cost you hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars over your career. We're not talking about, we're not talking about this, the cost of a candy bar. I mean, when you aren't right, when you aren't vibing in your highest self, you are costing yourself huge sums of money. Forget the happiness and joy in life. You're costing that too. And you're probably going to get diseases faster. But it is the biggest sin that you can make in life is to shut your soul down. Millennials are not your problem. They are probably your solution. If you work for a smart millennial, you might go further than if you work for someone who's washed up, haggard, tired, irritable, closed off, protecting their ass and doesn't want to do anything more in their corporate job because they're afraid of getting fired, laid off, et cetera. So they're like in protection mode. You don't want to work for someone like that. You want to work for someone who's ambitious and hungry and eager for more and pointing in the direction. You want to go, go, go. You don't want to be held back. The number one reason why women book clarity calls with us is because their career is going nowhere. And one of the top reasons is because of their boss or bosses. If that's your problem, you got to make a move, but don't quit. Cause that's not really like that smart. Not, not that advisable. I mean, we can handle it, but not the best move. Quitting is kind of like following the drama versus the data. But if you don't have the nervous system to be able to handle it, I understand. I get it. We talk to a woman all the time who have quit their jobs and many of them end up working with us because to get back on track or to get even beyond where you were before the big quit, you got to take care of your soul. So for this week, give yourself the absolute commitment not to judge others and to take responsibility for your path, regardless, regardless of what might seem like it's in the way. Because I'm telling you, the only thing that's in the way of your success at the next level it's the face you're looking at when you brush your teeth. That's the answer, not the millennials. So solve your own problems in here and you will notice a shift in all people that you deal with. If you don't know how to do that, I understand a lot of women we work with, matter of fact, all of them, haven't been able to do that either. I hired my first coach nearly 20 years ago now, February of 2000. I hired my first coach because I was banging my head up against the same problem. And I decided I need someone who was going to be able to see the world differently than me because it wasn't working for me. And at the time I was making like $150,000 a year. I was an executive at a health system like otherwise known as kind of successful. And I was unhappy, stressed out, just stressed out. I eventually lost that job. I was reorganized slash fired out of the organization after five years. That was a powerful blow because I wasn't yielding to the lessons at that point. It took me several more opportunities of lessons for me to finally get it. This month, I'm actually celebrating my breast cancer journey. And I'm going to come and talk about that uh, perhaps next week. Um, last year, I did a whole series on it. Um, this year, I think I'm just going to do um, another uh, Facebook Live on it. Um, I'll tell you this. When you're brought to your knees, you almost have no choice but to do some deep self-reflection and take responsibility. Because you realize when you go through something like that, there is no one who's going to take it for you. It doesn't happen. 
So your life, no one's going to take it for you. No one's going to say, hey, get out of the way. I'll, 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 I'll drive your life for you for a while. And if you let people convince you they're going to do that, you are going for their ride, not yours. So this week, commit to taking greater responsibility for who you are and what you're all about. Make some changes there. And number two, stop judging others. Stop judging things you don't know. Look into it. Take away data, not drama. And there is only one true foe in this world, and it's the woman in the mirror. Make her your best friend. Get really snuggly with her. And she will open her heart, open her soul, and open her mind to helping lead a better life for you. If you know my work, love my work, and you want to get to work on making your life the best possible by advancing your career, that's our portal into your soul, you can book a clarity call. I believe we've got a link here. So it's mofall.com slash live clarity call that will get you booked for a call with my team or I. I love it when I pick up the phone. Hey, this is Coach Mo for your career clarity call. Really? It's you? <laughs> it could be me calling you on your career clarity call. And let me tell you, there ain't no wiggle room if you're getting me. I'm just saying, I'm going to help you see what your truth is. And if we can help fix that through the work I do in my kick-ass workshop, then by all means, we'll invite you in. If we think we can help lift you in the right direction. If not, it's a free call. You're going to get some truth. You're going to get some coaching. You're going to get some awareness. And that's worth a lot more than the price of the call, which is free. So we do that to help serve you and also to make sure that we're helping sort out um, those folks who we can really work with and make a difference in their lives and those that, that we simply may not be able to, but we'll give you some great resources either way. All right, ladies, and if there's any gentlemen, so yes, uh, MO does stand for momentum. It stands for movement. It stands for motivation. It stands for Mo Money. That's what you want in your career because that equals, say it out loud, freedom. All right. We'll see you next time. Um, I'm going to be popping into either this Facebook group or my Bring Your Soul to Work Facebook group. Uh, Krista, if you could post the link for the Bring Your Soul to, to Work Facebook group. It's a closed group and I can actually interact um, in that Facebook group and talk to you a little bit better than on this page. So um, I'm going to do another millennial uh, topic this week. I have to figure out kind of where I can fit that in. Um, so I'm going to do that just kind of like stay alert, put your notifications on, and I'll be back at you on this very, very interesting topic. Uh, Tracy, nice to see you. Paige, nice to see you. Debbie Grant in the house. Gene, nice to see you. Veronica, Amy, who else we got here? RJ, nice to see you. I don't think I've seen you before. At least you haven't commented. Got it going on. Um, hopefully I've answered people's questions and nice to see everyone. Michelle, great to see you. Uh, Paula, as always, awesome to see you. Karen, nice to see you. Julie Gordon, nice to see you. And Jackie, Sherry, Shira, nice to see you. Miliana, as always, and Tanya and I think Amy Beth. And I think I got most of you. Thanks so much for joining me live. This is Coach Mo. Book your clarity call if you want to really get to work and take responsibility for your career. There's only one person who can do that, and it's you, not those millennials. Book it at mofall.com slash live clarity call. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned because there's always inspiration around the corner when you follow Coach Mo. And if you haven't listened to my radio show on Unity Radio, check it out. If you're on my email list, you're going to get the reminders every Thursday, 12 noon Eastern. I talk live and I accept your phone calls. So feel free to take advantage of that. We'll see you next time. This is Coach Mo everywhere on the internet at Coach Mo Fall or mofall.com. Book your clarity call if you haven't already done so. See you next time.